Now, for the finishing up of the title card, um, let me see if this is website's working. It is working now. Okay. Um, at, on the uh, assignment submission form, one of the things I added in here was adding sound effects. Okay, so I want to show how to add sound effects, how to add uh, music to this if you want to add music to it. <clears throat> Obviously, rendering, organizing, and then just some additional things. Um, over the uh, break, I went and recorded a couple other videos, um, the hotkey video, layered animations using um, strokes on top of things. So if you were to have just like, here's my regular animation, I want to add something on top of it to look, make it look fancier, that's ways you could do it. Here's specifically about track mats and then solids versus shapes. Um, so at some point, you should watch those or will watch those. Um, uh, but I'm going to go over some other stuff today. Uh, cool. So uh, there are several websites out there you can get sound effects from. One of them is Looperman. Um, this is the one that I've used before. Um, basically, if you just wanted a, um, a loop of an audio, there's a great resource. If you want an audio clip or a music piece, they have lots of stuff here, and it's free. The people make stuff. They put it up on Looperman, and basically, <clears throat> if you use stuff, you have to give them credit for it when you make a video. So if you were to download a, a audio clip, okay, like that, whoever is inside this, Frenchie Bounce, you would give Frenchie Bounce credit and Looperman credit for this is where the audio came from. You put your video on YouTube in the description, audio from Frenchie Sound at Looperman, and name the clip. Okay, so whatever you use for any audio clips, you would do that. If you're looking for <clears throat> sound effects, there's several websites that I use, but the best thing to do is look for free sound effects, and then type in the, the kind of sound effect you're looking for. Think about your animation and how it's coming into the screen and what kind of effect or what kind of audio sound um, helps the viewer connect to what's happening. If your stuff is sliding into the screen, it may not make sense to have like a kind of sound effect, like a clapping or a smacking or in my case, I think snapping uh, sound effect. Maybe it's like a whooshing sound. Maybe it's a, a grinding sound. Maybe it's a, a uh, sparking sound, whatever. Uh, whatever sound effect you think you might want, that's the typically I just go to YouTube, type that or Google, type that in. Um, smack, let's type that. And Sound Bible is one that I will typically use. Um, I've used Audio Blocks before and FreeSound.org. And again, all of these have their own specific um, licensing things with them, so you have to check that out. Um, you can see the information here. The sound is licensed under the Creative Commons. If you click on the sound effect, <clears throat> um, you should get, there we go, Place on our Creative Commons. You are free to share, copy, and redistribute, adapt, remix. The licensor cannot revoke these. Uh, you must give attribution credit and provide a link to the license and indicate if changes were made. Okay, so again, something if you use sound effects, you want to keep track of all of these things. So if I download this sound, I'm going to save this and write down the information for CGFX um, in a Word document so I remember where I got it from. Um, so I'm going to listen to this and see if it's something I want. Okay, I'm going to turn that up so you guys can hear it better. There we go. So that definitely is a smack or punch or something. Maybe not what I want. These are like horrible punching sounds. There you go. That one's kind of cool. It's a slap fight. <laughs> we'll go with slap fight. Okay, so uh, you create an account. It's free. You log in, and then you can download the sound effect. And then again, we would save this uh, thing here. Uh, audio. I'm just gonna drag this into my folder. So now I have a link to that specific audio uh, file. Um, show in folder. I'm just going to cut that, put it into my audio folder. 
Uh, I also did the same thing for, um, for music. So I went out there and I found royalty-free music. Um, I use Looperman as one, like I said, that I use. Um, I found this other one today because Looperman was down for a minute called um, We Make Sounds Orange, Orange Free Sounds. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but they have some audio sound effects here too. Uh, these are also free. If you download the MP3, the wave, for whatever reason, costs money. Okay. Right, so just like the sound effect, if you're going to use a background sound or a background song or something, you want it to match what the animation is that you have. All right, so let's say that one's good. Exotic intro melody. I like it. Uh, the sound effect is permitted for non-commercial use. Uh, so what that means is, obviously, this is not a commercial um, uh, project. We are using this for our own demo reels to put on YouTube uh, or portfolios. If this was something that you're going to make money off of, you cannot use this piece of sound. So something to be aware of that if I were to be working at a company, I grab the sound effect, it ends up being in a commercial for Ford or something. They could sue Ford, I could lose my job and then be shunned from the industry forever. Okay, um, So you want to be aware of that. Um, sometimes if it is a specific sound, you can contact the people and talk to them and you know get a license you could use. Uh, but not in this case. Uh, so you can see it says buy Soundwave or free download MP3. So same thing, I'll just download the MP3 file. <clears throat> and then I'll extract it. It comes zipped up. Uh, yes, sir. And then it gives you a readme here that says there are no hidden costs, no need to sign up, permit for non-commercial use, blah, blah, blah. And there's the information. And then I'm just going to grab these two sound effects or uh, audio clips that I have <clears throat> and drop them into here. Now, typically, when you get a sound effect, you may need to tweak it or modify it. Um, my intro title card uh, is about six seconds. Okay, and the actual animation is done. I saw those zeros on there. Those should have been gone. Where are you at? Right there. Oh, and we got rid of those. All right, let's get rid of those real quick. Oh, wait. No, I don't need those. I have my one. Yep, I just turned the one off. That's what it was. There it is. Cool. All right, so my animation is actually done by, you know, 5.15 or so. So I wouldn't want to have an audio clip that's going to play past 5.15. On the other uh, hand, whatever audio clip I put in here, I want my animation to be synced up to it, okay? If I have no audio in here, I have a little bit more freedom to say, I want this to happen, then this to happen, then this to happen. If I have an audio clip in there, I want those things to be synced up. So if there's a specific beat or a specific sound, I wanna make sure that my animation matches that. So uh, I'm roughly at about 5.15. If the audio clip I can get down to six or get down to five, I'm going to make sure that those are the the right uh, time parameters. If my animation or my audio I couldn't get down to, if I only got it down to three seconds or I had 14 seconds, I have to figure out a different audio clip because it's too long. Okay. Um, I also don't want to compete, so I've downloaded um, background music and I've downloaded sound effects. I don't want to have the background music and sound effects on top of each other kind of competing for which one the person is hearing, okay? So typically, in this case, you may use one or the other, or if they can, if they blend well together, you could use both, okay? So uh, I'm gonna open these up in Audition. If you've never used it, uh, Adobe Audition is basically a sound editor, um, and it's pretty easy to use once you know a little bit about After Effects and some of those shortcuts. Uh, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to drag my audio clips into this top window here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to double click one of these and then just hit the space bar to play it. OK, there's my slap bite. All right, now this is what's cool about it is let's say that I didn't like how high it sounded. I wanted it to sound low, a little bit more bassy. 
um, I can double click the entire thing, go to my effects, and under pitch, <coughs> uh, pitch bender, nope, it's always the wrong one. One day I will remember which one it is. Pitch shifter, that's the one. Okay, so I'm gonna go to pitch shifter. I'm gonna hit, uh, let me set this back to zero and zero. There we go, hit play. Okay, so that's our original sound effect. I'm gonna pull um, the semitones down. And you can see how I can change what that audio sound effect is. So if I don't want that high pitch sound, I can make it sound a little bit deeper. Or I can go the other way. So now it's a little bit higher pitched, and I can pull this up too. This is like the main one, and this is kind of like more refinement. There you go. All right, so if I wanted to play with that, I could. Um, here's the other one. So this is another clip that I found that I thought might be a good one. Now, if you look at this, we can obviously see where the audio is, right? It's the big spikes right in the middle or right on the side. So this is where my audio is happening. This guy here, I don't think he is anything. Um, if I don't want both of these, I can just grab one of these and just hit delete and that's gone. I don't have to worry about it. Um, if something needs to be faded out or faded in, I can do that as well. So I'm just going to jump to a different clip. Here's the uh, different sound. Okay, so this is actually 12 seconds long, so it's way too long for my intro. Uh, one of these is about four and a little bit of seconds. Um, this here, if I were to use the second one and the first one, now I'm at above eight seconds. So I probably don't want to use, in this case, both of these or all of these. I may want to find one of these that I want to use as just like, here's my sound effect for this. So I'm going to rewind this again and hit play. Find the best one. I think it's the first one I like the best. Yeah, it's a little too high for me. All right, so I'm going to go and just grab this and just hit delete. And then I'm just going to save this as, um, and I'm going to save it as a WAV file. Um, you've used uh, Photoshop before. Every time you save a JPEG, it downgrades the quality of it. Same thing with MP3s. Every time you save an MP3, it loses quality. A WAV file does not lose quality, so I'm going to save it as that. So electric guitar musical phase uh, intro, I'm going to say electrical guitar cropped. And it goes into my audio folder. I hit okie dokie. I'm going to grab this other one. Okay, so here's another audio clip. Now this one is a lot more repetitive. There's a lot more stuff happening inside the clip. <clears throat> um, like I said, I wanna find that sweet spot of it not being too long or too short. So as I'm listening to this, I wanna find if there's a spot that I could cut it. And typically, you don't wanna cut it at certain spots where the, the user is gonna be expecting to hear more of that sound. Like if you hear a pattern, like doot, 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 doot. They're gonna be expecting those other two doots in there, okay? Um, so I'm gonna listen to it again and see if I can clip it at about five or six seconds. All right, so I think I might be able to clip it there or right there. I think I want that last one in there, even though it's a little bit past it. I definitely want that other one. Uh, there's four, four, and then four of these things. So I want that. It's a little bit above six, but that'll be fine. I think it'll line up better. The animation will seem better because it's synced up to something. Um, so I'm gonna grab the area I want, okay? And I'm looking at these um, spikes, the peaks, the valleys, and I can see this little high point, that's where I'm hearing that sound, and the rest of that is just kind of like the trailing off of it. 
So I'm trying to find the low point of where this is at, probably around here somewhere, and I'm just going to grab everything off to the side. Uh, your zooming tools are control, scroll wheel, let you scroll in and out. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go to edit and say crop. Let's hear it again. All right, so that sounds fine. I'm going to clip it a little bit at the end. So this is your fade out. So if I grab this and just scoot that over, it'll fade the audio out at the end. So instead of it just like abruptly stopping, which will be jarring to the viewer, uh, it'll just fade out. Uh, if I want a big fade out, I could do something like that, and it'll like be a huge fade out, right? Um, maybe something like that. Let's see. Yep, I think I liked it with just a little fade out. All right, so that's fine. All right, so again, I'll save this as a WAV file. And let's say exotic popping. As a WAV file in my audio folder, hit okie dokie. And then these other ones, um, I did do something, this bubble one. And then this is my slap fight. I don't think I did anything with that. Yeah, it's just slap fight. I'll save it as slap fight anyway, as a wave. Okay, and then I can close this. There's more stuff you can do inside. You can add echoes and reverb and all this stuff, but we're good for that. Um, cool. So here's all the stuff that it added into there. So I have my four original files, which are right here. I have that um, internet shortcut. I have my four things here, and then I have this exotic popping PKF, which is just an audition file. You can delete that. That doesn't do anything. Um, cool. So now I'm going to go into um, After Effects. There's my original animation. And I'm going to drag in my stuff. So initially, I'm just going to put in my um, uh, sound effects and show you how I would sync up the sound effects. Then I'll show you how I do the audio. So I'm going to grab my two sound effects, drop them into the audio folder. It's syncing, and there they are. OK. So I'll grab one of these first and just drag it down into here. Um, I like to keep all my audio separate from my video. So if I have all of my video stuff is down here, my audio is up there, okay? Or vice versa, my audio is on the bottom, however I want to set that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and try to get a, I don't want to use this for every single thing. Every element that comes in, I don't want to go t -t 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 -t. that's kind of like really annoying. I want it to be like on maybe a major item, like the zero one in my in my assignment, or just my assignment, or just my name. Um, so let's do it on the zero one, okay? Um, so I'm gonna say the zero one comes in about there. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit L twice on here. That allows me to see that waveform again. I don't want to line up my clip with the start of this layer. I want to line it up with the start of the sound. So I'm going to drag this so it happens right about there. So that as that zero one comes in, we hear that slapping. Now I already know that that sound effect is not going to work with the zero one because of how I animated it, but I want you to see it so that we can then tweak. Okay, so I'll set my work area big. I will hit play. Okay, so what doesn't work about that? It plays after the ones on screen. It also is like the ones like slowing down and we hear that sound effect, right? As it comes out, it might make sense like, like it's hitting it like a baseball or something, right? So let's go there, pull that back, and let's see. Right, so that makes a little bit more sense. It's a fast sound. The zero one is moving fast. Those two things work together. Watch again. Right? So those two things are kind of like in sync. Um, here's where we don't want to do like multiple ones. If I wanted the sound effect again, I just control D and duplicate it. I'm going to put it there literally for every single thing that hits. So the sarcona comes in. Um, 
I'm going to drag this over so it's lined up with that. Uh, I'll duplicate it again. <clears throat> what else comes in? That line comes in, so I'll move it in for the line. Um, that title card comes in, so right as the title card's coming in, I'll put it there. Oh, and my background also comes in right there. Okay, so now I have the sound effect for every single item coming into the screen. This is going to be annoying. <laughs> okay, it's like we're typing or something. It's a really like jarring thing to have too much sound effects on there. Uh, so much more effective, obviously, when we just had the one on the screen, which is I think that one there. Maybe I'll do the two. We'll see what that looks like. Yep. No. And I think this one might be just a hair over two. Sometimes you'll find your sound effects work best like one frame left or right. It's really not a good sound effect for that zero one if we use it for both. My name, it, it works fine, but for the zero one, yeah, it's fine when we just use the one. Okay, so that's how I would add a sound effect. <clears throat> if I'm gonna do a slap fight, same thing. Uh, line up where I want that to happen. So let's say right there, hit L twice, and then I line up the peak of this with where that's happening. There we go. Now, if I had like a gliding sound effect or something that maybe um, uh, lasted a bit longer, it might work for that zero one kind of like sliding into there, right? Someone like uh, ice skating and they like, you know, grind on the ice and you hear that like shh sound, that might work for the zero one, but in that case, no. All right, so that's how that would work. Uh, let's go grab the other ones, the music ones, and drop those in. Exotic popping guitar. Okay, so before I start playing with either of these, I have nothing on comp one. I'm just going to delete that. There we go. Uh, before I start playing with either of these, I'm going to I'm going to duplicate my title card. Okay, and you just Control D to duplicate that, and I'm going to call this one audio. Okay, uh, and the reason for that is. Um, once I drop the audio in there and I start moving things around, that's going to change the timing of my animation. I want to be able to go back to the original one if I don't like what what I've done to this. So I'm going to drag in, um, I guess I'll do the uh, electric guitar first. That one's a bit easier to do. I'll hit L on this twice so I can see it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, two. Uh, left and right speaker. So if we only had one channel, so we only had the left speaker, we'd only see one of those bars. Good question. Um, cool. All right. So I can see this. It's just that sound effect right at the beginning, the sound effect, right? Um, so maybe I want to put that in right here, let's say. We'll try it there and just see what happens. All right, so that actually works fine. I could actually go into Audition, maybe add a little bit more um, echo to it at the end and make it last a little bit longer so that it still is there at the very, very end of this. Um, or I could go into my animation down here. Let me delete the stuff I don't need. I don't need this. That's from other stuff. Um, this is my animation, this is my animation, this, this, and this. So I'm gonna hit U on those so I can see the keyframes. And maybe I'll just take all the keyframes here and just squish them in a little bit more so that they get done sooner. Let's try that. Yeah, so that's good enough, right? For that kind of audio, that's sufficient. Um, now I'm going to duplicate my audio card again, or my title card again, double click it, <clears throat> I'll delete the electric guitar, and I will drop in my exotic popping sound effect. Hit L twice, and then now I have basically markers of where I want that stuff to be animated in. 
Um, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on this, okay? So we talked before, uh, probably on the first one, if we are animating something and we physically don't see it on screen, there's no point in having the layer be visible at that point. So here at the very beginning, we see nothing, which is fine because it's the start of it. But when we get to this point here, the only thing we see is this solid at the bottom. We don't see this or any of these other layers. So I'm going to go through and just alt left bracket that to cut it. Go to the next layer, alt left bracket that, and I'm cutting it right where the keyframe starts. Okay, and all that's going to do is basically give me an indicator as to this is where that animation starts. I'm going to do the same thing at the end. Um, I may need to tweak that, but we'll just leave it for now. Okay, this way I'll know exactly like, okay, my animation starts here and it ends right there. There we go. So I just clipped all those so that I don't see them. And now what I really could do is just hit U on this to hide those. And that's the animation for it. So the first thing it animates in is this. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab all of these and just scoot this down so that that is lined up with that one. And for the next beat is about here. I'm going to grab my next item and drag that about there. For the next one, it's about here. I'll grab the next item and put that there. Next item is about here. Next item is about there. All right. So now we're only looking at the start of this, not the end of that. So let's just see what it looks like. So that doesn't work with the start of it, okay? Because what's happening is as the item is coming into the screen, we're hitting the sound effect. What I want to have is as it hits, as the um, sarcona hits, that's where the sound effect should be happening. So I'm going to hit U on this so I can see it. I'm going to grab my ticker and put it there, and that's where it should be hitting is right at this point. And the same thing on the next one. Grab that, hit U. And then go here. And then go there. All right, so let's see how that sounds. I'm going to set my end of the work area there so I can just loop this over and over again a few times to see it. All right, it's kind of there. It needs some tweaking. So maybe just moving these layers back another frame or two. All right, so it's kind of almost there. Okay, so that would be the process for this. And then when I do the end part of that, I would go through and, let's say, line up these, and then that's what would trigger this thing to go off. If I drag this here and it goes past that, I need to then drag these so they go a little bit further. So if I go here and say the next one I want to animate starting there, I would grab this and drag it over. And I'm going to grab these and drag those over. That one actually lines up good. Sufficient. I may have to change speeds and stuff on that too, uh, but I think it's good enough. 
I like this one the best, I think. That seems to be the most fitting for what I have animated. So I'm going to go with that one. Okay, and again, it's not a bad idea to get different iterations as you're playing with stuff. Okay, so uh, this is the one I like. If I don't want to use any of the other ones, title card and title card 2, I'm going to just delete those and just stick with the one that I have. That way I know that this one is my title card with the guitar. Um, if I don't want to have any of these other sound in there, I need the guitar. If I don't want these in there, I'll delete those as well. There's no point in keeping stuff in your project file that you're actually not using. Okay, so it's always good to keep your area clean. Um, same thing here on the bottom. <clears throat> I need to go through and clean these layers out because I did not clean these ones. So I'm just going to alt bracket that. Go here. Alt left bracket. Go here. Alt left bracket. Go here. And the same thing on this side. Oops. So I'm just snapping that to um, that ticker to that by holding shift and then using alt right bracket to trim it. There we go. And then I can hit U and then C. That's much nicer looking. I don't know why this one's so big. Hold on. And then this is obvious, like we can see exactly where the animation's happening. The bottom one happens first, second, third, fourth, and then down the other way. If for some reason I accidentally moved something like this, I can say, oh, that's probably out of order. I need to move or shuffle things around, okay? Uh, but that's how I have it animated. Um, cool. So once I have some audio in here, once I'm satisfied with the animation, um, I previewed my motion blur. I like the way that's happening. I have my speed graph stuff set up. It comes in, goes out the way it should. Um, my end animation looks like it's about five seconds. So I'm going to go up to my composition, go to composition settings, and just reset this to five seconds. Okay, so now my whole animation is five seconds. The last thing I want to do with this is just do some finishing touches on it. This can be pretty boring. It's, it's, Basically, it's like too clean. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my title card and I'm going to drop my title card onto a new composition. And what that does is it creates a new composition that has um, the title card inside of it. There it is. But it's all flattened out. Okay, it's all like one layer now. I can still get to the other ones by going to the other composition here, but all the other stuff is right there. And the reason I would do this is, let's say that I wanted to add a vignette to the whole thing, okay? Well, I can go in here, make a new solid, give this a color, um, I'll pick that pink color. And then I'm going to go to my shapes here, and I'm just going to create a mask about there. And on this mask, I'm going to go to Invert. So it's the opposite. I'm going to go to feather so it's nice and soft. And then I'm going to go to expansion so that it pushes, pushes it out a bit further. Um, anytime you do a vignette, the point of it is to draw the user's attention, the viewer's attention, right to the center of the screen. Um, and we can do that by giving a little bit of contrast to the edges. Maybe they're darker, uh, sometimes they're brighter, and it pulls it in because it's the same color like this pink here is the pink there. Um, I may need to adjust the opacity on this too. We'll see. There we go. That's nice. And so now I have this little vignette that goes around the outside of it. I can also use my switches and modes here and change that top one to be, let's say, a multiply. Uh, didn't do a whole lot on the multiply. Let's see. Maybe color burn. Yeah, that's fine too. All right. So if I didn't want to go with the pink, I can use this color burn, and it'll basically like burn the edges so we can see it a bit uh, more focused. I'm going to enhance that a bit because you can't really see it on the screen up there. Take the intensity up. There we go. So now you can see that a bit better. Um, I could also go in here to my layer new and do an adjustment layer. The adjustment layers in After Effects work very similar to the ones inside Photoshop. Whatever you put on an, adju an adjustment layer will uh, um, affect everything below that layer. So I'm going to take the adjustment layer and put it between these two layers. Then under effect, <clears throat> anything I do in any of these effects will be an adjustment layer. So if I were to add, let's say, um, 
distortion, let's say I added liquify to this adjustment layer, every layer underneath would be affected by liquify, okay? Um, or if I did you know, blobby, right? I did blobby to everything underneath it. Uh, I'm gonna go to the color correction and I'm just gonna go to um, hue and saturation. If I decided that I wanted to adjust the colors on this after the fact, I want a little bit more punch to it, maybe I can take the saturation up a little bit more and that will saturate it more. Or I can desaturate it and pull it down some. Uh, or I can take the hue and shift it a little bit if I'm not liking that color combination that I have. Okay, obviously I can go back to the original one, change the colors, uh, but this can give you different iterations of things. We'll get more into this in the next assignment, but um, it's a neat way to be able to do this kind of adjustment. Okay, um, you could also add a color correction curves. Where's my curves? There they are. So I can pull my curves up just like in Photoshop. <coughs> And again, I can click this FX and see the before and after. So maybe it'll give it a little bit more contrast, make it a little bit more punchy. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that I'm happy with everything that's in here. Oops, I don't like that at the beginning. Um, I'm gonna animate the opacity of this coming in as that comes in. I'll say that's 100, and then here it's zero. There we go. You know, that looks weird. Uh, I will not animate the opacity. I will animate the position. And I'm actually just going to go in here, take these position keyframes, go to this one, make sure I'm rewound, and then paste it. And so now positions will match. Okay, now you'll see that it's off slightly right there, and that's just because I don't have motion blur set here or there. That should be it, 480, yes. And then maybe this needs to be tweaked just a little bit. No, I think that'll be fine. Oh, it's because I have this Uh, awesome, so that's all done. So my animation is done, my audio is in there, I'm satisfied with the way this looks overall. Um, now I need to actually make it into a movie. Um, inside of After Effects on a Mac, <clears throat> you'll find different options than on a PC, okay? So if you're on a Mac, um, you'll find different ways to do this, but we're gonna do it this way and it works for both stations, okay? So when we export this, we're gonna export it to Adobe Media Encoder. On these computers, Adobe Media Encoder takes forever to start up, like literally 10 minutes to start up and get going. Um, so if you're getting to the point where you need to render your stuff out, you probably wanna start up Media Encoder earlier in the day, okay? So this is Media Encoder. I already opened it before I even lectured. That's why it's open so quick. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take our After Effects project and open that in Media Encoder and allow us to export it out as a QuickTime movie, okay? Uh, we don't have too many options that we need to deal, to deal with because the defaults are already set up. Right here, we make sure this says H.264, which is a default, which should be fine. We go to where the name is, and we put this inside of our uh, output, and we just give this a name, Sarcona underscore title card and then hit go. And then what this does is it links back to After Effects, renders out our movie, and saves it as a QuickTime file. So now if I go to my P drive, it's still working, but while I navigate to it, title card, output, okay, it's done. There's my movie. I double click it. Make sure the audio is up.
Okay, and there it is. There's my first assignment rendered out as a movie. Every project we do, we'll have that same thing. We'll make something, put our title card on it, drop it into Media Encoder, and render it out. Okay, so that process will never change as far as uh, that goes. Um, once I'm satisfied with that, I'm just going to rename my stuff. So this will be title card final. And then this other one, I'm going to rename as title card edit. Okay. And basically, whenever we have an assignment, when we do our page transitions, we do our page transitions. And before we make it a movie, we bring in this title card, change those two fields on it. The 01 will now be 02 for the next assignment. And then title card will be page transitions. And then we put that at the front of our page transitions and then we render that out as a movie. So this way we know this is the one where we edit, and this is our final one. And that should be it there, so now I'm going to save, and I'm going to exit this. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna go through and just clean up some of my stuff that's inside here. Um, I don't have anything in reference, output, there's my movie. There's nothing in my movies folder, audio has these. Uh, and just like I said before, if you don't use something, there's no point in keeping it there. So I don't use any of these other things. So I can just delete those other ones. Artwork, I have my planning card. Um, I have these auto saves, I don't need those. I have this I can delete, but I'm gonna save it for now. Actually, I'll just move it to a different folder or just drop it right here. Okay. So now this is the, what you're gonna turn in for your projects. So you would take this and you would copy it. You would go to your, um, on your computer, it's your Z drive, 1900, and you would say, turn in uh, title card 01. And you would just paste that in there. Then you would take that sheet that you filled out this title opener sheet, you would staple your um, uh, thumbnails to it, you would staple your planned artwork to it, and you would put it in that folder up here that says 1900, okay? So Monday when you come in, we're gonna work on the next one, um, or I'm gonna show you the next one, but you can finish this up and then turn that in along with the other stuff, okay? So that'll be the process for everything that we turn in is packaging it up, giving me all of your paper like this, any planning that we've done, and then turning that into the folder. Cool? Questions? Okie dokie. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it will be on YouTube. Uh, and then you had one too? Or is that the same question? Same question. Okay. 